Cheryl here with part two of the haul from my mother-in-law's house. Uh, this part I'm going to do jewelry and I got, there's uh, quite a few vintage pieces and then I also have some newer pieces and pieces that were made by my sister-in-law. She uh, is kind of a bead freak and she made hundreds and hundreds of necklaces and, and didn't know what to do with them so she was just giving them away by the handful and whatever was left over, she didn't want to take home. So she gave them all to me. She said, find a way to get rid of them. So um, I'll probably sell them on eBay. And uh, some of them are really, really nice, and I'll sell them individually. And some of them are, they're all really nice, but some are, you know, less special, and I'll probably sell those in lots. But let me start with the uh, more vintage things, or at least I think they're vintage. Uh, this is the first thing. It's glass beads, probably check glass beads, and I think that these green ones are jade. They're very cold anyway. And it's got this type of latch on it. I don't think it's old. I don't think this one's very old. It is a, a, a tongue, whatever they call those clasps. But this little thing the little safety latch on it. Looks new. Newer. I got this necklace. This is an old Coro, 1960s enamel on metal. I really like that one. And then this, I've never seen anything quite like it. I think that it's pewter little frogs and enamel lily pads with some kind of glittery stuff. I have no idea of the age or the maker. Not even sure it's pewter, but I just thought it was the cutest thing, those little froggies. And it does have, you know, one of these kind of fold over clasps, which is an older style clasp. But there's no marking on it. If anybody knows what that is, please let me know. I think I only got one brooch, and it's one of these uh, spun sterling silver. I haven't tested it, and it's not marked, but oh, it does says sterling on the card, so somebody probably tested it. But um, I do real well with this. It's called Canatel or something like that, and I just sold a bracelet out of this for $38. So, um, you know, I think I'll probably sell that for about... 22 maybe or 24. I don't know. It's, this one doesn't look like a super old one. They made it all the way from Victorian times up through the 1940s, maybe even 50s. And this is a made in Japan glass bead necklace. I think it's very unusual because of the color. It's kind of lavenders and pinks and a little dash of blue. And because they're, the beads are matte, they're not shiny. That's, uh, you know, 1960s era. These are some college pins that belong to my mother-in-law. She's so unsentimental. She's like, well, I don't know, I don't want them. Here, take them. Uh, I think that they're all 10 karat gold. This one is... These are like honor societies. This is mortarboard. She went to University of Michigan. This, she said, was her junior year. It's the Witherins. It's got a little uh, dragon and a W. Reminds me of Harry Potter, Slytherins. Oops. And then this has the Michigan M and it says Union. Not, I, I, she really gave those to my husband, but I don't think he has any interest in keeping them. He is less sentimental than she is. This is a Trafari necklace. I have to say it's not one of their better made pieces. It's missing five or six of the little fake pearl cabochons because they're just glued in. And 
I have the earrings that go with. The earrings are not missing any stones, but I think that I may repair the necklace with the earring stones. Kind of sad to do that, but I think that the necklace has more value than clip-on earrings. These are some sterling silver, little dangle, twisty earrings. And these are also sterling silver. These are pretty heavy. And these are Mexican sterling silver. They desperately need a polish. And I think in this case, I will polish them because they're kind of ugly and polished. This is my favorite piece. I'm probably going to keep this. This is Mexican sterling silver modernist or mid-century modern fishy it's got the eagle mark right there on the tail and it does have a maker mark I haven't looked it up and then one more set of sterling silver earrings these are kind of neat they're crystal set in sterling with the uh, the post, I forget what they call this kind of back. It's like a clip-on, but it's got a post. Let's see, I think that is all the silver. These, I thought they were gonna be silver. They look like Native American silver and coral. However, they're just too light. And when I look closer at them, they don't really look like silver. So I think that they're just Native American style, totally imitation, but they are cute. And these are just some glass bead dangles. They're very nice beads. These are some screw back earrings with the rhinestone clusters, but they're pretty beat up. I don't think they're nice enough to sell on their own. So those might go in a, a jewelry jar or something. These are just some clip-on, fun little dangly bead earrings. They're not marked. I'm not sure what I'll do with those. These are not marked either. I'm not sure how old these are. But they're pierced. I don't know. Cool. These are just some little birds, little mother of pearl, and uh, little turquoise quartz. That's probably jasper, that little brown rock. Very cute. And I got a couple of pairs of mid-century enamel on copper. These are fun. I've already worn these. Here's some little, little loops. And then these are kind of fun. These are, they're clip-on earrings and these little mother of pearl loops just kind of slide on. And then I have another pair that's gold and these hoops are bone, carved bone. And then you can swap them out if you want. You want mother of pearl and gold together? You can have that. Okay, that is it for the vintage jewelry. And then, this is just to give you an idea of the jewelry that my sister-in-law passed on to me. There was more than, there was a, a uh, it was a large flat rate U.S. postage box, completely full. Uh, she did give a lot a lot of the jewelry away. Um, some, not, she didn't make all of this, but she made most of it. Um, some of it is stuff that she bought at rummage sales. Like these two, she did not make, but they're not old. But they're so cool. I love this one. The original price on this one was $260. It says it's jade. The pink is Maybe rose quartz. I, I'm not sure. 
I don't know. Anyway, my sister-in-law bought it for three dollars. So pretty. Um, this is another another one that's clearly by the same artist because the style is the same. Faceted glass. It's just beautiful. Uh, let's see. And these, I think the rest of these my sister-in-law made. And I'll just go through them real fast. Oh, here's another one that she didn't make by that same person. I really, really like the look of these. Here's a nice one that's got agate and ceramic, hand-painted ceramic beads and wooden beads. Got a nice kind of combination of things. This one, from a distance it looks like cloisonne, but it's actually hand-painted ceramic beads. It's very, very heavy. She said these beads cost like three bucks a piece at least. So, wow. And then this one is made from, I think it's glass beads, art glass beads. This has got a um, petrified nautilus shell and some, I think these are glass beads. My sister-in-law does not buy cheap beads. These are like some wedding cake gla art glass beads. These are some lamp work beads. Those are just a few that I took out that I especially liked. Okay, that's it for the jewelry. Next up, I will be showing you the books, like uh, price guides and um, you know pottery books, jewelry books, things like that. I have a stack that's about three feet high and uh, some cool magazines and yeah. So that's what I'm gonna show next. Thanks for watching, bye.